Uh, I've got to say, <clears throat> hey Luke, are you in the mood for some original movies? No, I've I've had it with these franchises: Shrek Five, uh, Harry Potter Seven. No, how about this? Skibbity Toilet One. That's right. Variety reports that Skibbity Toilet film and TV franchise in the works from Michael Bay. Are you excited about this? Uh, not really. Yeah. Well, obviously we are um we are of an age where Skibbity Toilet is just right up our alley. Uh, I'm always talking with the talking with the kids, uh, like myself, about the the latest Skibbity Toilet. I'm sure you uh, you you you've been talking with your your bros about Skibbity Toilet well, too. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't really talk to random kids like you, so maybe that's the difference why I'm mm. not excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because the kids I've been talking to everywhere, they they've been they they're really excited. This could be the new Transformers, which which wouldn't even be that impressive because no. the movies aren't great. Yeah, it wouldn't really, would it? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Select and Reflect, the movie review podcast where we look at films that have come out in the near and distant past. We give them a couple of watches and evaluate them beyond first impressions. I'm your host, Michael, and I'm joined as always by my co-host, Luke. And this week we are celebrating the, well, I'm not sure exactly because we're celebrating in some sense the announcement of there being a Shrek 5, but also I believe, wait, hold on, is it any kind of significant anniversary? Go on, you can do it, Michael. I guess I guess it's it's the twenty year anniversary. Ah, uh, there we go. I, I knew you really? had it in you. Yeah. I just I just I I thought it was I thought this movie was earlier than two thousand and four, but there we go. Um, but yeah, so obviously Shrek Five has been announced, but also it's the two thousand and four anniversary. Nope, twenty year anniversary of Shrek Two. So Luke, why don't you tell us a thing or two about Shrek Two? Sure thing, Michael. So yeah, as you say, it's the twenty year anniversary of Shrek Two. Uh, yeah, it's a two thousand four American animated fantasy comedy film loosely based on. <laughs> Very loosely based on the 1990 children's uh, picture book uh, Shrek uh, by William Stieg. Mm. Uh, yeah, very loosely based, even more loosely based than the uh, <laughs> than the first uh, yes. uh, Shrek, of course. Yeah. So, uh, of course, this is a sequel to Shrek, which came out in 2001, and the second instalment in the Shrek film series. Uh, of course, how many films are there now, Michael? Uh, there are currently four. Yeah, but there's going to be five. Of course. Yes. Yeah. It was directed by Andrew Adamson. Kelly Asbury and Conrad Vernon. That is the only time I've ever seen three people direct a movie. Well, g- given credit for. Wow, yeah, this must yeah. be a disaster. All of those uh, too many cooks spoil the broth. That's what I say. Also, the name Asbury sounds like raspberry, but somebody you know was like trying to insult you about it. Yeah, well, like someone's like like you made like a really crap raspberry. Somebody's like this raspberry tastes like Asbury. It's spelled A S B U R Y. Um. Anyway, so uh, the the movie stars uh Mike Myers. Eddie Murphy, Cameron Diaz, Julie Andrews, Antonio Banderas, uh, John Cleese, Rupert Everett, and Jennifer Saunders. Uh, so yeah, quite a star-studded cast and some mm. like British people as well. Um, the movie was released on the 19th of May 2004. So yeah, we're uh, a bit over its 20-year anniversary. Uh, and Michael, can you guess the budget for Shrek 2? Yes, it was 80 million. Uh, is that your guess? Mm-hmm. Why? Um, I actually I I remember because I have I I I I happened to watch the beginning of our Shrek review and it was sixty million. To be honest, I might be going slightly under. My logic is it's got to be more because they would have you know it would have been a bigger deal. I suppose maybe like it, it could be it could be more than that. But I'm I'm happy saying eighty million. I, I would okay. hope that eighty million is ridiculously off. Okay, so what we're gonna do that we're gonna do the fifty percent rule because just you're you're done. So what we're going to do then is, what is 50% of your guess? Is it's 40 million. So that would be 120, 120 million in total. And that would get you close to the actual budget, which was 150 million. Oh, wow. That's quite uh, a lot of money, eh? Yeah, yeah. Quite a lot of money. Uh, maybe you could, you know, think of a couple of reasons why this movie costs so much. I don't know. It was pretty short, so I would think it shouldn't have cost them that much money. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, there's other things that go into a budget. Uh, rather than just, you know... I, th- I thought it was just renting the studio for the hour and 20 minutes that it would take to make this movie. No, uh, unfortunately not. Uh, oh, well, we'll get into that later, why this movie costs so much to make. Uh, what about the box office, Michael? How much did this movie rake in? Now, the funny thing is that uh, even though I listened to me guessing the budget, um, I didn't listen to me guessing the box office because I, you know, I got I got bored. Um so well, that's, I don't a really great, know how, that's a great that's practice. a great endorsement yeah uh, i don't really know how much but i mean it must have been a lot like quite a lot but not a billion obviously but like i'm thinking more than 500 million um so i don't know i'm oh god i'm just i'm gonna say it made 600 million 
Yeah, not not. You're right. Didn't didn't make a billion. Only made nine hundred thirty five million. Ah, oh, damn it. Uh, so yeah. Uh, but what what's fifty? Well, let's do the fifty percent rule. So what's fifty percent of six hundred? Three hundred. So it gets us to eight hundred million. No, it gets us to nine hundred. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, sorry. Duh. How dumb do you want to be this this, this episode, man? Honestly, oh, this, this is classic. This is awful. Yeah. So uh, nine hundred million. That that would be your guess. So yeah, again, for these kind of movies where you're feeling a bit you know, stupid, the 50% rule works kind of kind of well. Uh, so, mm. yeah. But, yeah, this, of course, was a massive success. And, in fact, was the highest grossed, uh, sorry, grossing animated movie of all time until what, Michael? Until what in, movie? Inside Out 2. No. No, no, just uh, Toy Story 3, maybe? Yeah, well done. Okay. Yeah. Toy Story 3, which grossed over a billion dollars. Uh, that came out, of yes. course, in 2010. So this held the record for six years. Anyway, Michael, tell me, did you like Shrek 2? I liked this movie. Um, so I, I remember you actually said, because I also saw this, you said in, in your Shrek review, you said uh, that Shrek is one of the greatest animated movies of all time. Um, I am comfortable saying that this movie is even better than the original Shrek. This is, it's kind of, it's almost everything in my view that a, a sequel should be. It, like it expands the universe, it expands the characters, but just it, not, not in a way that feels derivative or anything like that. Like it's adding new things. Um, yeah, this is a, this is a really solid movie um, and rendered all the more solid when you think about the fact that like it obviously knows what it is. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think this is as good as the first Shrek. I this think is that- interesting. This is uh, now I would say, you know, my assessment of the uh, you know general public opinion would mean that that would place you in, in a minority position. Oh, really? Would you, uh, would you? I think most people quite comfortably. I know people who don't actually even like the original Shrek. Well, I say some people. That's dumb. One, well, look, let me tell you, you're going to, when I tell you who it is, you're going to feel really stupid for calling them dumb. One, the nostalgia critic, um, <laughs> famously in his, that's good. He's, he said that uh, he didn't really like the original Shrek, but he thought Shrek 2 was fantastic. So okay. that's, that's a real, that's a real uh, divergence. I mean, the thing is like the movies are pretty similar in like the, the themes that they deal with. So that's just really funny. Honestly, it's, it's like, no, the, the first Shrek, which focuses on, you know, the theme that you should always be yourself. You know that that's awful. The second movie, which focuses on the theme of you know you should always be yourself, that that's, that's great. Yeah. The, that. th- the only thing I literally remember, like the only thing I can remember from that review, because it might shock you to know that I haven't actually watched uh, any nostalgia critic recently. You know, I'm a little bit out of date, but uh, I just remember he really didn't like when uh, Eddie Murphy as Donkey in the first film said, "Tomorrow morning I'm making waffles." He was like, "Waffles? I don't get it. How's that supposed to be funny? What's funny about waffles?" Like that was literally like his. Like, that was his criticism. He was saying that he didn't think the original Shrek was very funny and didn't have very funny jokes. And his, his evidence for that was that um, Donkey said he was going to make waffles in the morning. And that's not a funny thing to say. <laughs> Which I do think is, like, a great way of analysing comedy. You just, like, take, like, the best comedy of all time. And then you just take, like, one line that's not particularly funny. And you just go, what's funny about that? Anyway. Yeah. No, but, I, yeah. I, I can't I, believe you think that joke about him making waffles is the best joke of all time. That's, I'm no. surprised to hear that from you. It is. It is, for sure. I mean, the way he says waffles is too good. Waffles. Uh, waffles. Yeah, Eddie Murphy. He uh, he knows how to do a, a line delivery. Yeah, mm. for me, uh, I think that this movie is a you know it's very good. Again, it is probably one of the best animated movies of all time because mm. you know the, well I don't know actually it depends what you mean by the best. Um, again, mm. I I think Shrek One was really good. You know uh, this one I I think again well it does kind of the same things obviously. Uh, so I'll just read this from Wikipedia. Like its predecessor, uh, Shrek 2 also parodies other films based on fairy mm. tales and features references to American popular culture. Um, yeah, again, it's just kind of like the first one in that respect. But of course, uh, I, I guess the reason why I prefer the first movie is because I find, I guess, the character uh, arc, maybe, or just the character development, uh, just more believable. Mm. Uh, it's more believable in the first one because in the second one, I find it hard to believe that Shrek would just give up being an ogre so quickly and then give up on fiona so quickly as well um, yeah he does he does pivot a bit yeah i think i think i could actually agree that the uh and also i mean the arc um I, I would agree the arc in the first one is is better realized and it's also more wholesome for what it's worth like you know yeah. that moment where he runs in like i i object uh, that's my scottish accent <clears throat> i object i'm an purple ogre. burglar alarm yeah so i think that is the difference for me it's like the you know the first movie I can believe why, you know, I, I can believe everything, you know, it, it, it makes sense. In the second movie, um, yeah, I'm like Shrek. Again, Fiona just doesn't really do a lot. She's just like kind of at the castle. Um, mm. She doesn't really have a role in the movie. 
Uh, and so it's all about Shrek, you know, basically wanting to prove to Fiona that, you know, oh, you know, he's good enough for her. It was wasn't it wasn't really a, a question. Yeah, you know, Fiona never, you know, really had an opinion. Again, this is kind of getting into the review here, but I'm just explaining the difference mm. between one and two. Fiona never really strongly said, "No, I don't want you to be an ogre." You know, she and so I'm like, well, Shrek really goes out on a limb to not be an ogre when there's no real reason to. And then, of course, he... Like, yeah, he has to be pretty insecure, bless him. Yeah, yeah. Again, which, you know, they've just had their honeymoon. Like, you wouldn't just be insecure then, would you? You know, there would mm. have to be a bigger reason. Um, and then, of course, you know, he, he sees uh, Fiona with uh, Prince Charming and he's like, well, I guess that's it then. I'm not going to I'm not gonna try and convince her. Uh, yeah, and that, again, I don't find particularly believable. Uh, and, and in the first one, I have no criticisms of, like, the character arc, the character's development at all. Um, and, of course, that's, you know, it's a comedy movie, of course. But mm. one of the reasons why these movies are good is because of the you know the characters and, and the themes and the, and, and the story you know and and they, both movies are quite funny. There was quite a few times in this movie I thought, wow, that's that's a good joke. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I think the the overall assessment, admittedly, it's one of those annoying things because uh, humor can be a bit more subjective. Whereas I think character arcs and stuff is much more easy to argue objectively. Yes, uh, I think the generally speaking most people and i i think this too although i don't have a perfect memory of the first film but i think this film for me is slightly funnier if not eh. perhaps uh, and once it's kind of interesting because last i think it was when we were talking about deadpool i said you know obviously it's quite rare if you're watching a movie just on your own to laugh out loud yeah there were several moments where i laughed out loud to myself okay. uh, during this movie, I, I, but I think I think that also were for for the original Shrek. But yeah, I think both yeah. of them are really funny movies. Yeah, I I think I'd have to watch the first movie again. But yeah, I mm. think uh, in this movie perhaps there are more cultural references that are funny, like uh, to to modern day I guess America mm. um, and American culture. And... Yeah, I'm very plugged in to American culture. Yeah, well I say modern day American culture in the 2000s of course. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I think uh, that that may be why it's perhaps funnier. Um, yeah, it's kind of more Family Guy esque, um, really. So, so, I mean, not really, because obviously they make jokes, you know, from a fairy tale perspective, of course. Mm. Um, you know, you know what I mean. But like, it's the same kind of humor as. as so it's like a reference humor where a lot of it is just, yeah, that is actually. I do think that's a kind of a reasonable point that yeah. a lot of it does fall into category of just they put their characters in or yeah like they just make the reference itself i it's see a, what you're saying it's a, it is well i i'm actually no i'll actually give it a bit more credit than family guy because some of the wow. jokes it's yeah it's more than just the reference the reference is like the central part of it why it's funny but they they do something funny with the reference um hmm. so that is again probably better than you know what what people assume family guy you know hmm. the jokes that family guy often makes but anyway michael how many nitpicks do you have i have two nitpicks uh, i have one so you go first yes yeah, so um First of all, I wrote, it's a good thing nobody else was watching Nights who knew that Fiona's husband was called Shrek when it was on, because obviously, and I don't know exactly how, the, one of the issues of this nitpick, a nitpick of my nitpick, if you like, is I'm not sure how well publicized it was, what Shrek's name is, because obviously everyone shows up to see them there, um, but I don't remember if anyone specifically says, this guy's called Shrek, but then obviously they watch that that Nights TV show, which is of course a, parallel, a par parody of Cops, and the guy says, I'm Shrek. And obviously all his friends are like, oh, Shrek's been caught. But it's like, well, it's, you know, it, what if what if someone else who happened to know uh, Shrek was also watching it? Because, you know, you'd think it would be a popular TV show. They'd be like, hold on a minute, that's Shrek. So oh, I yeah, just but thought, what would they do with that information? They'd say they'd go up to Fiona or they'd, I don't know. I suppose, I suppose, I just assumed it, like it would get back to Fiona if uh, if it was revealed that her yeah. actual husband was on live TV. That was just my assumption. Well, yeah, like but, prime time. Yeah, but maybe not that night, you know. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, okay. Fair, yeah. fair, 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 fair enough. So um, I, I don't think it's a nitpick, basically. And I also have like a nitpick that came from immediately after that, which is, and this one I think is just, there's, there's, I don't really think there's really that much of a way around this. Far, far away can't be that far away if his friends all the way back in the swamp were able to get there like before the night was done that's a good like, the yeah the timing is a bit weird because it's like it's implied it's a really long journey to get to far far away when they go there by horse and carriage but then like it seems like like i don't know how they got there from the swamp maybe maybe the dragon took them uh but I, i'm not i'm not really willing to accept that but wow wow unbelievable <laughs> yeah no i'm just like yeah. the dragon appears in the mid credit scene so maybe yeah. the dragon took them Okay, so now it's time for my nitpick. So, uh, yeah, Prince Charming uh, gets back from, you know, trying to rescue Fiona um, in, in the tower, of course. At the exact same time, Shrek is in uh, Far, Far Away, or Shrek and Fiona get to Far, Far Away. You know, it's because he's like, oh, yeah, I'm back. The princess wasn't there, etc. Mm. And it's the same It's the same day. That, yeah, that, that is actually a good point. Yeah, Shrek and Fiona arrive in 
in uh, in far far away. So yeah, that's a, that's a nitpick. And my lip pick is of course the way uh, Shrek uh, says donkey. Um, you mean donkey? <laughs> donkey. That's great. Yeah, he, he does say it funny. He's a funny guy. Donkey again. That's a. It's become a bit of a meme, I think. Uh, there we go. And of course, gal of my swamp. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I uh, what I should have done for the cold open instead of talking about fucking skibbity toilet. Is play you know the uh, the old uh, Shrek is love uh, Shrek is life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You did that last time, actually. Yeah. yeah, you did. It's it's a bit long, so you know maybe we can at least we can just settle on the fact that you know we got to get into the the substance of the review earlier. At least you know small blessings. Okay, right. So uh, let's get on to the plot then. So Shrek and Fiona travel to the kingdom of far, far away, where Fiona's parents are king and queen to celebrate their marriage. When they arrive, they find they are not as welcome as they thought they would be. The zealous mm. fairy godmother who wants Fiona to marry her son, Prince Charming, plots to destroy Shrek and Fiona's marriage. Uh, of course, uh, Shrek and Donkey team up with a sword-wielding cat <laughs> named Puss in Boots to foil her plans. Yeah, I, at first I thought it was kind of a Meet the Parents parody. Of course, you know that movie uh, that came out in 2000, I think. Uh, you know this movie? Meet the parents. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, and then they had to meet the fuckers, and yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, yes. well, that was. I haven't seen it. Ben Stiller and uh, yes. uh, what was he called, Robert De Niro. Uh, but mm. I was like, well, that's a bit, you know, a bit soon for a, for a parody. But however, mm. and then I looked on Wikipedia, and I'm like, it's actually not, uh, you know, I, I guess a parody or inspired by uh, Meet the Parents. It's actually inspired by another movie. Do you, do you know which movie that could be? Uh, yeah, I'll give you a clue. It came out in 1967. 1967. Yeah, you're not going to get this. Uh, no, I'm not. Yeah, uh, it, have you heard of the uh, movie Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? I have heard of that, like that, and that name. I've also heard of the Tiger Who Came to Dinner, but that's a different. Or the Tiger Who Came to Tea. Yeah, it's to tea. Yeah, come on. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not Northern, so I don't call it tea. Um, well, Jimmy, well, the, the, the book is called Tea. Let's be clear. I know. Yeah, no, I, I always, I always translate in the yes. south. I, it's, it's supper. Oh. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, but I don't really know anything about it. Well, I think uh, it's an interracial uh, relationship. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, and then that's Kinky. <laughs> why. Wow, you really ha- are, are porn brained, aren't you? Wow, interracial, eh? I know what that means. Yeah, like the fact that you'd go to kinky after hearing the term interracial uh, mm. is, uh, yeah, yeah. It's interesting because I was reading the, uh, you know, the blurb on Wikipedia, and interracial marriages were, I think, illegal in um, in several states in 1967, and only a few months later, in was it Loving versus Virginia? Oh, oh love. loving versus Virginia, kinky. Loving v Virginia, actually, because um, you know they don't do the verses. It's like v loving in, for the Supreme Court cases. Um, mm. Yeah, uh, that interracial marriages were ruled to be legal in all states, and states could not make them uh, illegal. Uh, yeah, and I'm right in saying that it just so happens the person's name is it was loving, like that was his surname, right? Well, I imagine so. But they like they had to wait until someone came along with the surname Loving, so that it could like sound more appropriate to be like you know because uh, it's really, yes. um, that, that's yeah. what was holding the South back from racial what, integration. What's, yeah, yeah, like they didn't have enough kind of nominative coincidences. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, yeah, like when I was watching this movie, I was thinking like this 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 could work if it was about like race. Yeah, you know? well, it is it is about race, you know. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. O- o- Shrek is an ogre. That's a different, yeah. right, I guess, a different species. I guess to, to but yeah, humans, so it's similar. Yeah. But the thing is that it's wow, a sentient okay. species. Okay, okay, but, yeah. What do you mean by similar? Oh, sorry. I, I meant similar to similar. <laughs> I meant that because they are two different species, but they are sentient species, it's similar to different races in the real world. The same way that like elves are like different species, but because they're all sentient, it's a bit like different races. So you're not, you're not comparing ogres to a particular race then? I'm not comparing ogres to a particular race, and I would even not compare goblins to any particular race. Okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, well done. Um, well done. Unless, unless they were murdering Palestinians, in which case I think they would deserve it. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit on the nose there. Um, <laughs> anyway, so uh, I, yeah, I think obviously let's talk about like the plot in general. Again, regardless of you know Shrek's character development, which again I don't think is that realistic, but whatever. Just you know, oh, he's coming to you know far, far away uh, mm. to meet the parents, meet Fiona's parents. I think it's again you say uh, you said it, of course one of the reasons why you like it is because it's you know it's good world building and i think yeah like as a sequel this is a this is a perfect idea this is a natural thing for a sequel to shrek you know you have this unlikely love story now you have to meet the the disapproving parents of fiona Mm. yeah it's just such a perfect idea it's such a perfect fit so yes it's no wonder they went down this path right yeah yeah yeah. i think so it's uh it's one of those situations i think with a lot of this movie it's like the logical natural thing that you 
would do but it's kind of the thing you should do and there are certain definitely movies that for tonal or genre region reasons basically the best thing you can do is just do the obvious thing you should do um but yeah i definitely agree that it yeah. makes sense because obviously you know the, the first film was about him not being accepted by wider society now it gets a bit more intimate he's not accepted by his his in-laws yeah yeah and i think that's why uh what was the third shrek called uh shrek the third yeah that's what it was called why why it's shit because it's like this, yes there's nothing really to do uh, justin timberlake yeah oh actually you know what? i was thinking about doing like a thing about how um uh like do you notice how justin timberlake was on the wall of fiona's bedroom yeah and like but then he's an actor in the next movie and i was like oh isn't that funny yeah no that's great it's really funny uh, yeah. So the rotten, Crazy. the rotten tomato consensus for this movie. So uh, it says it may not be as fresh as the original, which is of course true because the original, like, it was a phenomenon. It's kind of why I like it as well more than the, you know, the second movie because obviously, well, the formula works. So you, you know, you know what you're doing for the second movie. The first one it was like a complete again subversion of what you know, quote unquote fairy tale movies would be. You know, I, I don't know what the genre would be specifically. You know, like Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty. What what genre did these movies fall into? Yeah, uh, like so, I would just say fantasy. I uh, think that's the easiest thing to say. But like fantasy is also fantasy like, adventure. Yeah, but that's also like Lord of the Rings, isn't it? So uh, I would say, um, yeah, I suppose, yeah, I suppose, I see what you're saying. So like, yeah, um, well, yeah, yeah. Well, basically, it's you know, it subverted the tropes you normally see, and also it was like you know, taking shots at Disney throughout the whole um, <laughs> throughout the whole movie. Um, so yeah, I, I, I you know, it, it was like, wow, this is a great idea. This is really funny. What a great you know, concept, the first, you know, Shrek movie was. So, of course, the second movie is like, well, you know, you already have this great concept, so you don't get as much credit for just doing it again, you know. Mm. Uh, and again, you know, that's why, again, it's not as fresh as the original, but uh, the Rotten Tomatoes consensus continues and says, uh, topical, uh, topical humor and colorful secondary characters make Shrek 2 a winner in its own right. Uh, and, mm. yeah, I think, again, the, the, the other characters in the movie that weren't in the first one are all quite good. They're all quite funny in one way or another um you know prince charming of course it makes sense that prince charming would be you know this uh narcissist you know who loves himself yeah yeah and i like i like the fact he's a mama's boy yeah. that's really funny exactly mummy yeah 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 and well yeah you, you, when uh when you make the decision for fairy the fairy godmother to be his you know uh his his mother then yeah it makes sense to go down that path and yeah the fairy godmother being like this this evil person who you know controls everything that's a nice again subversion and then of course you've got um uh well puss and boots as well the other main character who joins mm. uh who's, yes he's, he's very cute yeah he's a he's quite a good character and we'll get onto him but yeah again it has the same style you know subverting these fairy tale you know tropes and all this disney stuff so yeah it still works doesn't it yeah i think the fact that they increase the number like what i kind of said at the beginning was that making it more expansive but in a way that just uh, I, I suppose the thing is because we already kind of have the main plot worked out with like shrek and fiona and things like that uh it then gives you the freedom to expand it more it's a bit like you know with spider-man they made spider-man one just to establish who spider-man is then they can expand it because they've, they've established where where they're at with you know all the core stuff and it's kind of a similar thing thing here where because they'd established that core stuff in the first film this time they're able to expand it and add in all sorts of other stuff and of course the, the then big thing they needed to do was make sure all that other stuff they added was good and I would say everything they added was good. Obviously, the main thing you pointed out is that the Shrek um, character arc itself wasn't that great. Yeah. Um, or, or was at least a downgrade. Uh, and I see where you're coming from there. But definitely everything they added in terms of other characters and, you know, other scenes and things like that, or other locations, was all really good. So well done there. So let's talk about the the production of the movie. So uh, in 2001, soon after the original Shrek proved to be a hit, uh, Mike Myers, Eddie Murphy and Cameron Diaz negotiated a, a, an upfront payment of how much per, uh, for the movie, Michael? Uh, well, you said the movie cost $150 million, so I'm going to guess they demanded $50 million each. Wait, how many people did you list? Three. You said three three people. Yeah, $50 million each. No, uh, I don't know, like maybe... Like, I guess it would have been a lot because the budget's a lot, but maybe like $20 million each. Uh, no, not that high. Just Okay, uh, $15 million, $10 million each. Yeah, $10 million. There you go. Okay. Yeah, because do you know how much they were paid for the first Shrek? 10 pounds uh, i don't know like maybe 1 million 350,000 okay that's not as much yeah 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 so again they uh, <laughs> it is not as much you're correct so mm. that is a massive increase isn't it uh, and yeah of course they they got what they wanted and uh, according to Jeffrey Katzenberg the payments were uh, probably the highest in the actor's entire careers and yeah that, mm. that's that's what that was his conclusion so uh, Ted Elliott and uh, Terry Rossio 
the screenwriters of the first Shrek film, insisted that the sequel be a traditional fairy tale, uh, but after disagreements with the producers, they left the project and were replaced by director Andrew Adamson as uh, a writer, uh, and his writing of Sh uh, Shrek 2 was inspired by the 1967 comedy drama film Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, so yeah, obviously that uh, that was the blueprint. And, and again, it makes sense. I don't know what the uh, Ted Elliott and Terry Rossi, yeah. what they had in mind. Because you say like they it wanted to be like a fairy tale. Yeah. Like, does that mean they wanted it to be m way more sincere? Like, that's the implication. Um, I, no, I wouldn't say more sincere. Um, I, I, I guess just like more, uh, m maybe set like, well, because what there's no real fairy tale aspect to this, I guess. Well, in, mm. in terms of like the actual structure of of, of the yeah. movie, like what Shrek does, it's like it's more about Shrek as a character rather than like a fairy tale. Like, it's is it is it based off any like fairy tale? Like this guy, you know, takes a potion which makes him different, you know. To yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I see. So basically, yeah, yeah, like trying to lean into more of a specific trope for the story itself. Yes, yes, and maybe subvert that trope somehow or, or some way. Yeah, mm. uh, but yeah. Uh, so in the early version of Shrek two, uh, Shrek basically is on this throne and he abdicates the throne. And called for a fairy tale election, uh, and yeah, apparently uh, one of the ideas was Pinocchio's campaign was an honesty campaign. Do, do you like that joke? Yeah, I don't know. It's one of those things where I can imagine someone pitching it, like in, in the uh, the, uh, the table read or whatever. Like, hey, what if Pinocchio was supposed to be honest? Yeah, like yeah. it's not great, but I get what they were going for. Uh, Adamson said that they uh, that although this plot did have many funny ideas, it was also uh, it was also too uh, satiric and political, and considered mm. more intellectual than emotional. Um, yeah, yeah, and fair that's enough. that's the thing. Like Sh Shrek abdicating the throne, you know, that's not really about him and Fiona. Yeah. But that's what they do in Shrek three, though. Yeah, Shrek three is about him abdicating the throne. Well, there you go. What hacks? They, they, they were out of ideas, weren't they? Mm. I mean, that's what I said before. It's like you know, the reason why these movies work is because they're about Shrek and Fiona and their relationship, and you know, Shrek not being, you know, I, I guess good enough or not feeling good enough. But that doesn't matter in the end. You know, it doesn't matter what mm. society thinks or the people around you. Again, it's all about you know b being yourself. And uh, that, that's how you uh, get the, uh, you know, that's that's how the people who love you, I guess, how, well, how to keep them or how to get them in the first place, mm. be yourself. So again, and so if you go down the path of like, oh yeah, there's this fairy tale election, all of a sudden it's not about, you know, the emotional, you know, mm. I guess, bond between Shrek and Fiona. It's about something else. And the, yeah. so the first two movies can do that. You can't really do that for the third one because they're like, again, it's Shrek, you know, trying to, you know, the, the, the I guess the conflict between Shrek being an ogre and Fiona not originally being an ogre you can't can you do that for the third movie you know mm. like you've done it twice so it's like okay now we're doing you know shrek abdicating the throne for the third movie you understand it's like yes yeah it's like that maybe that's the only thing they could do and that's why sequels are not always a good thing right yeah, so I think honestly, like even though this movie I think was a very good as a sequel, there's an obvious limit to the sequels. Yes. Uh, in terms of like how how far you can push it. Yeah, yeah. And DreamWorks often plays. I think like almost every single like slightly successful thing they've had, they've just tried to do sequel after sequel. They've done it with Kung Fu Panda, done it with Madagascar. I think there's another big one well, they've done it with as well. Um. Well, Toy Story isn't DreamWorks. Yeah, Toy Story is Pixar. Yeah, so yeah. I was, was going to say, with the exception of Toy Story, Pixar usually don't go to you know too hardcore with the like they maybe do like one legacy sequel but they they haven't had too many franchises where they've really pumped out crap to be fair to pixar <laughs> whereas dreamworks have done that a lot okay uh, so let's get into the script then so shrek and fiona return from their honeymoon to find they've been invited by fiona's parents to a royal ball to celebrate their marriage uh yeah let the soundtrack at the start i, I think it's great when <laughs> when um we we hear accidentally in love play at the start you know yes so it's it's perfect for, for that montage so uh yeah fiona convinces a uh, reluctant shrek you know that they should accept uh the parents invitation and they travel to the kingdom are far far away with donkey in tow uh did you find it funny when donkey was saying are we there yet or not um, uh yeah i don't think i i did find it that funny yeah because I, I i didn't i was like this mm, this is yeah. one of the jokes which i'm like i don't like this this is yeah there was there was a significant lack of a waffle related comedy which i think was very very disappointing for me personally mm -hmm. um yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there are... I mean, the thing about with this film now I am thinking about it is it is often trying to be funny, which means that when it is funny, that's great. But I suppose it does mean that in the moments where it's not being funny, it is failing at being funny as opposed to just not being funny. Yeah. Uh, I like how, um, you know, far, far away, once they get too far, far away, you, you know, of course, what, what it's based on. Uh, yes, uh, New York. What? <laughs> I tricked you. No, it's uh, based Never. on... L 
given how dumb you are you, sometimes you don't know honestly yeah i know well you know this is the thing now i'm trying to that, that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to gaslight you by occasionally you know what luke i did know exactly what the budget and box office was it was all part of an elaborate ruse anyway well, uh, no yeah obviously it's a uh, uh, hollywood with the sign but i guess la in general la la land yeah i imagine disney were very powerful in hollywood mm. and dreamworks you know coming into hollywood you know this new company you know, maybe maybe yeah. that's how DreamWorks felt coming into Hollywood, you know? Yeah. Well, there was a lack of goblins. <laughs> <sighs> just, you know, I'm just like thinking, like now I'm thinking about what it was supposed to be parodying. Yeah. You know, they really, they missed the mark there, did old Katzenberg. Yes, well, DreamWorks, you know, coming into Hollywood, you know, they're feeling intimidated because of the might of Disney, you know, the, the new kids on the block. And maybe that you know, is a parallel to Shrek and Fiona coming into yeah. far, far away, you know. Uh, and yeah, uh, although, of course, you know, Shrek did win an Oscar, but maybe, wasn't it? almost going to win best picture and they had to create a new category uh, yes yeah you, yeah yeah so this is actually something else you mentioned in the in the shrek review yeah. i remember this yeah yeah I and we were talking about how annoying that must have been for disney that they've been like cracking out fantastic animated movies and then suddenly when the uh you know when the animated movie category gets created they kind of go through a bit of a dry spell and dreamworks is on the ascendance well yeah but i i think um it, it was fine for disney if the if I am right, that the animated category was created to, you know, because Shrek was going to win Best Picture potentially. Yeah. So, like, Dis- for Disney, I guess they were like, well, at least yeah. it's. Dunks on, yeah, stops them getting a more prestigious thing. Yeah, at least they're not getting Best Picture. Again, at their first major attempt for a movie that mocks us when we've been trying to win it for like a decade now. Yeah, that must have. Yeah. That would have hurt. So, I guess it was fine that they win. Oh, yeah, you can win Best Animated Picture, this new category, so you don't win the prize that we've been wanting to win for rages by <laughs> in a movie which is taking shots at us yeah yeah it is really weird that it took them that long to come up with best animated especially considering it's not as if like the animation reached some kind of golden age at that point no. if anything it's like you know the golden age of animation like there are lots of great movies in the 80s and 90s well yeah Sh- shrek i guess was the great disruptor you know it was yeah. disrupting the market you know as as uh, all the, the tech people say or all, all, the, mm. all the cool investors say that's what it did in the early t- the 2000s so yeah, it disrupted the market, and yeah, I guess you can understand why DreamWorks, I guess, would feel kind of unwelcome in in Hollywood, considering <laughs> yeah the uh, the uh, the shots they were taking at one of the biggest companies there. So so yeah, uh, Shrek and Fiona meet Fiona's parents, King Harold and Queen Lillian, uh, who are shocked to see uh, the ogres, uh, with Harold particularly repulsed. At dinner, Shrek and Harold get into a heated argument. Uh, yeah, and I guess this is you know the guess who's coming to dinner bit. I haven't seen the movie, but I imagine yeah. Yeah, you got a similar dynamic in. Yeah. It's assuming he doesn't eat his own young. Yes. They were really racist back then. They were then. so racist. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, also it's kind of like a, a fish out of water element as well. Yeah. Because, and, and I guess like the other thing, you know, one way in which it slightly advances on the original like Shrek thing is in the original Shrek, he doesn't want to like do any of this stuff. Like, so he's, he's happy to be on the outskirts of society. Whereas in this one, obviously he and himself is happy, but because of his relationship with Fiona, he has to like, he's forced to, you know, be part of civilized society or whatever. So the, the fish out of water thing works uh, better because obviously it wouldn't work in the first one because it's like, well, he doesn't care about it. Yeah. Uh, whereas here, because he has to, you get that kind of extra dimension. Yeah. So uh, Fiona, uh, disgusted at their behavior, locks herself away in her room. Uh, Shrek worries that he is losing Fiona particularly after finding her diary and reading that she was once infatuated with Prince Charming. Should he be insecure about this? Because, you know, it was mm. her diary from when she was a kid. She's yeah. like an adult now. And it's she, she's a whole different yeah. person now. So again, I wouldn't be insecure about that. Um, wow, Luke, you're so brave. Sorry, if I was if I was Shrek, <laughs> yeah. I, would be, I wouldn't be yeah. putting putting myself in his shoes. I wouldn't. I'd just be like... Oh, no, yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, the argument that Shrek has with fiona though i just want to point this out it, it is a very comedic and i guess you could say it is comedic because you know it's two ogres arguing you know and it's normal you know sp- spousal arguments you know about, yeah, fighting with the in-laws etc so it's the fact that they, you know it's two ogres doing it then that makes it kind of funny if you get me uh but mm. uh, if you just take that out of it you know the dialogue isn't that funny i just think yeah this part of the movie isn't really that heavy on the comedy like yeah i suppose they, they tend to in this film have i guess a bit more of a um stratification between the comedy and the drama yeah yeah and, and i you know it is quite melodramatic but i think that works honestly because like mm. you know i guess with some movies that that try to be like ironic and you know funny and like almost meta in their jokes you know like they they lack i think the genuine like the genuine emotional uh, i guess investment in the characters but like just having a scene like this i think where they're just arguing 
and there's mm. not really anything funny about it, that's good. Like, and you may be tempted to throw in a couple of jokes. Maybe Donkey says some stupid yeah, stuff, like, like a Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa, that just happened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but there's, you, you do that, and it's like, okay, yeah, this can be a comedy movie. Of course, it can. Uh, but it can also be, yeah, a, a movie that you know has you know drama and makes you feel something for, for the characters and. Yeah, doing that, you know, requires you just have maybe a scene like this where it's just not heavy on the comedy. That's maybe the formula to Shrek, maybe because it it does have sincere moments, wouldn't you say? You know? Yeah, yeah, I, and I, I basically do think you made the point quite well uh, that because it does need to lean into, like, I get it's about contrast because they need to have that sincerity. Um, and it's almost like, in some sense, there's, there's almost like a big meta joke about the fact that the film is in some sense very... Um, not exactly cynical but it's kind of it's 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 making fun it's kind of snarky but then at the same time it's also often casually kind of doing a lot of this stuff better than other movies are like in a way like this is a more sincere and robust romance than you see in most disney fairy tale movies right yeah like 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 there's no there's no reason why um you know ariel and uh prince eric should actually have any sort of affection for each other. Or Cinderella. There's no substance to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, Whereas here, there's actual substance to it. Well, that's the formula again. It, it marks the like substanceless, you know, I guess the mm. superficial romance of like Prince Eric and Ariel or Cinderella and the prince. Like that's just superficial romance, isn't it? And mm. it mocks that. But then what it also does, which is why it's so good, this movie, is it could have just it could just be could just be mocking that. But then it goes above and beyond and then actually has a real like romance which which actually you can believe, you know? between two characters again which you know shouldn't you know have a real romance according to traditional fairy tale rules again this is the formula like this is why it's so successful because mm. it is it has its cake and eats it i guess but it doesn't really eat the cake because you know to continue the metaphor uh, because it you know it eats a different cake like a better cake a cake which actually has substance to it you get what i mean mm. you know no, yeah yeah i think that's a very poetic beautiful way yeah uh, but i would consider you know that also could work for onions as an analogy just because you're focusing on cakes okay i'm sure cakes are what's there but you also you know onions maybe it's a bit like an onion yeah there's layers yeah or parfait <laughs> okay like you see again the, the first movie is so much better because you can say like just parfait and like <laughs> waffles and like oh, I... uh what about it's a thong yeah that, that's that's good that's 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 yeah, solid yeah. Right, so uh, Harold is uh, secretly reprimanded by the fairy godmother, who had arranged uh, with Harold for her son Prince Charming to marry Fiona. Uh, and again, I like this like plot, I guess twist, I guess you know uh, this uh, this plot line. That, that, it's it's good, it's good, it's good stuff. It works, I think, uh, quite a bit. Uh, and yeah, she orders Harold to get rid of Shrek, or, or else lose his own happy ending. Uh, so Harold arranges for a, a local outlaw to assassinate Shrek. Yeah, again, I, it's a nice subversion, isn't it? That, that, that mm. the fairy godmother is Charming's mother and also is evil, isn't it? Yes. Uh, yes, that's that's good. Uh, and and yeah, I, I guess. Look, we we've mentioned before how yeah, um, I guess Dream, DreamWorks and and these Shrek movies, I guess, uh, parody, I guess, or mock like Disney. Uh, but this movie maybe takes more shots at like Hollywood in general, of course, because you know, Far Far Away is you know based on yeah. LA in some aspects. Do you think, like, the storyline with the fairy godmother being Charming's mother, is it like parodying the nepotism? Nepotism, yeah. yeah. you see in Hollywood, like, the reason that people get these jobs is because of, you know, you know familial connections and, you know, Charming is going to get Fiona, he's meant to at least, because of who his mother is. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely could see that, like, in the kind of the entitlement, because obviously he is very entitled. Yeah, or is, is just, that going yeah. too far and it's just a joke? That's what I'm right. I think I think that is, so I don't know if it's necessarily directly about nepotism in Hollywood. I think it's definitely about nepotism in terms of like young kids or you know like basically old kids even uh, with powerful parents yeah Yeah. um i was gonna say when you said like this is like uh an expose on hollywood i was gonna say this is katzenberg's eyes wide shut (laughs) like martin scorsese gets involved in this industry and he's like sees all this stuff and then katzenberg's like yeah i've seen all this stuff and i'm gonna make it into shrek um but yeah yeah yeah, i also i want to say you you said martin scorsese you don't mean that do you Oh god, yeah. What's his actual name? Stanley Kubrick. That's it. I always get those guys well, confused. Yeah, when you say his actual name, you got the wrong person. You know. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Stanley Kubrick. Anyway, uh, the other thing is, I was gonna say, like, um, just on subject of the fairy godmother, like, it works because it's kind of like a loan shark thing. It's like, which is, it's just a, it's a very clever kind of twist on it because obviously a loan shark is like, hey, I, you know, I hear you got a problem. You need me to fix it, and then obviously, you know, you yeah. owe him a favor, and that's basically how fairy. So it's like that idea of she grants you the wish, but then oh, now you now you owe her a favor. Yeah, I like that. Just like Shark Tale. Exactly. Yes. Wow. 
Ah, oh, this is, Shark's Tale was so great. I can't <laughs> wait until we review that. Well, I, I, it came out, I and it's, it stars Stanley Kubrick, of course. When did that's a good joke? When did Shark Tale Thank come you. out? Uh, I, I feel like didn't Shark Tale come out in like 2004 too? Am yeah, I crazy? Yeah, like I, same. I yeah, 2004. I haven't got it on the list. Oh uh, no! What a, what a shame! Oh, fuck, <laughs> fuck! Right, <laughs> we're really missing out. Hopefully they they do uh, do a Shark Tale too. I mean, they joked about yeah, it. Hopefully, hopefully they cancel all the forthcoming movies that we were uh, going to yeah. review movies around. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully we do a Shark. Uh, sorry, yeah. Well, we made a joke, didn't we, about Shark Tale two coming out? Yes. Think, and hopefully they do it so we can review the first Shark Tale. Yes. Yeah, and of course Will Smith is in Shark Tale. You know, we could have a good joke of him slapping a Chris Rock fish um, yes. you know like the, you, you could have done that in the first Shark Tale so opportunity there in the sequel so yeah um, I guess you could have but obviously there wouldn't be a joke would there and if, no yeah <laughs> yeah uh, anyway so uh, Puss in Boots like, let's talk about him now so he, he, he tries to kill Shrek but is unable to defeat him and well because he coughs up a hairball that's why um, yeah, and I and I love in this fight, you know, Puss in Boots. You know, he's like, I am Puss in Boots, and he does all the sword stuff, you know. Mm. And it's so good because he just attacks Shrek like a cat would. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like, yes, I find I find that so funny. He just like again yeah. drops all the uh, the boots of the sword and just goes at him like a cat. Yeah, like, oh, I mean, it's also like he's not like like it's funny because he's like set up as like so imposing, and he's not even like very good at all at actually fighting. No. But yeah, like the fact that he doesn't even try to use the swords. Yeah. I love that. That's so good. And then Puss, uh, well, yeah, he's just called Puss, by the way, in Wikipedia. Uh, so I mm. refer to him to that sometimes. Uh, Puss reveals that he was paid by Harold and offers to be an ally of Shrek. So what do you think of Puss in Boots? You know, I think he is, he is cute. Yeah, he is like the perfect addition to the sequel. I think he is a mm. he's a great side character because uh, obviously Donkey's already there, but he is different to Donkey, isn't he? Um, and yeah, that Donkey, of course, says you know the position of annoying talking animal has already been taken. So I think obviously the writers were conscious of it. Like, yeah, we, we need to add in another character with Donkey and Shrek, you know, because it's a sequel. That's what you do. And of course, there's plenty of, you know, fairy tale characters to pick from. Plenty of like fable, I guess, characters mm. to pick from. Um, so, yeah, and I guess they made a good choice with Puss in Boots. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which again, like, I don't even know, like, like anything about, like, who Puss in Boots is supposed to be as like a traditional character. Um, like I don't know if well, he's, Puss in Boots he's, is supposed to be some kind of like Zorro type person. Well, he's Spanish, I think. Um, okay, he is. He's canonically like. And, well, Zorro or Zorro, of course, as it yes. is pronounced, is Mexican. So I guess maybe that's why he's like a, a, a Zorro yeah. parody, you know? Oh, you know what? Okay, to be fair, like I'm looking up Puss in Boots now, and he does have like a cane. So uh, I'm guessing like maybe like that's like because I'm just like thinking of this, like how did they get from like I wonder whether or not they they thought of like hiring Antonio Antonio Banderas first or something because I'm just wondering how they got from like the the character of Puss in Boots who as as far as I know I honestly just thought he was a cat who wore boots but I'm looking here and it says country Italy and France wait what what Puss in Boots is from France he's not well it says it says from 1550 to 1553 he was from Italy and 1697 he's from France oh wow okay I so 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 I just assume because like he speaks Spanish, there's a lot of reference. You know, he talks about like Catalonia at one point or whatever. I I oh the character yeah. the, the fable is definitely from the cat comes from Spain in the fable, so that's not true then. No, yeah, yeah. So which is why like that's why I'm like thinking to myself like I wonder how because like maybe maybe it even started with Catalonia. Maybe they're like, hey, Catalonia, that's a good joke. Ah. Um, the thing is, I will say this: I don't know whether or not because again, who the fuck knows anything about like Puss in Boots like as as a, a story? It's possible that where he's from isn't really that significant in the uh, in like the original story. So maybe they're just like, oh, he's just like from somewhere in Europe, and they're like, hey, Spain's funny, or hey, my I'm friends with Antonio Banderas. Yeah, I'm just wondering. Because again, it's I don't really think, as far as I know, they didn't really do anything clever in terms of specifically building off the character of Puss in Boots. But again, I can't really say that because I don't know anything about the like actual character of Puss in Boots. Yeah, yeah. I'm, oh, that's. Yeah. I, I assume he must have been like originated from, no. from Spain because of because they weren't so happy with the Spain references. Wow. Well. Yeah. Uh, that's that's crazy. Okay. Yeah, maybe you're, you're right. Then maybe it was Antonio Banderas was like cast, and it's like okay, let's make him Spanish then. Uh, although, yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's interesting. I'd, I'd love to know. It doesn't say on Wikipedia how they made Puss in Boots Spanish. Mm. Oh, damn. I guess, uh, yeah. Well, you know, it's a, it's a European cat. Well, well, he yeah, Zorro, again, he's Mexican. So maybe that is kind of what what I was suggesting, but it's just like a lazier way to get yeah. there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so And also, well, the Three Musketeers, what nation, uh, nationality were they? So, so they are French. Okay. So, yeah, that doesn't work either, does it? 
No, yeah. yeah. I thought I mean, yeah, so obviously again, Zorro Zorro is obviously like the, the main thing that he's clearly based on. And of course Antonio Banderas played Zorro, so that's that's mm-hmm. obvious. Yeah, okay. So oh did, did he? Antonio Banderas. Oh yeah, did you not know Antonio Banderas I, played Zorro? Yeah. No, I didn't know that. Again, it's Zorro, by the way, not Zorro. For the, like Oh okay. Zorro, because yeah, like they, they don't have yeah. they, they don't have as many vowels as we do. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Uh so right, Yeah, I've actually seen that movie. It's fine. Yeah, okay, yeah, of course you had it, otherwise you wouldn't have known that. Um right, so <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I got, well. Let's talk about the characters. So, yeah, well, yeah, I like how Shrek wants to wants uh, Buster Meats to come along just because of how cute he looks. You know, yeah. so I look at him in his little boots. You know, <laughs> that's great. Little boots. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Just try to kill him, but no, he can come along because he looks so cute. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, but yeah. well, it's just like I mean, that's that's the thing, and it's one of those things. Like I don't know, I'm pretty sure like every fiber of my being is telling me that's the kind of thing that I bet in the sequels they lean into too much. Like I can't really remember. Yeah. Um, and like at the same time, I can't blame them because it is kind of it, several times in this movie it happens. Every time I'm a hundred percent here for it, they really do manage to make that animated cat look look real cute, <laughs> real adorable. Yeah, um, uh, I like the banter with him and Donkey uh, as well. Yes, like the beef. Yeah, the, co- uh, the chemistry between him and Donkey is good, uh, which makes sense, of course, because yeah, like you, Donkey can have chemistry with any character, I think. But yeah, yeah, mm. the animal testing line, I like that line. And uh, then he drinks it, and Donkey says, "Do I look different?" And Puss in Boots says, "You still look like an ass to me," uh, which yes. is just really good, really, really, really yeah. good. Uh, because donkeys are asses. Good, yes. Uh, so Puss in Boots necessitated the development of a whole new set uh, of film production tools to handle the appearance mm. uh, of his fur belt and, and hat plume. It's like it's like how with Frozen, they had to like come up with snow, but in this case, it would just make the cat look cute. Yeah, Puss's fur especially required an upgrade to the fur shader. So there you go. It's like mm. Phantom Menace in how it improved graphics. So yes. P- Puss in Boots did the same with uh, Shrek 2. So uh, Shrek, of course, is depressed that, you know, the king w- wants, to, uh, wants to kill him. Uh, and, you know, Donkey says, uh, don't worry, everyone who meets you wants to kill you, which I thought, again, was mm. a great line. Did you think that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of dry humor at this point. A lot of just like, you know, those, those quick one-liners. But uh, yeah, they're all good. Okay. I, I can't, I'd like, none of them really stand out to me that I can think of. Uh, I... The thing I remember liking is when, oh yeah, okay, like, uh, jumping ahead just the tiniest bit, but like the women who are really into him, and when they say something about like, you've got to get you out of these these clothes, and the guy's like, <gasps> yeah, because, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, no, I get it. It's, 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 that's, that's for the adults. <laughs> that's, that's for the parents watching at home. <laughs> so Shrek and Donkey and Puss sneak into the fairy godmother's factory and steal a happily ever after, a potion that Shrek thinks will make him good enough for Fiona. Again, firstly, well, this is what I mentioned before. Is it believable for Shrek to want to become Prince Charming you know, for Fiona? Yeah. And, you know, a human and not an ogre. Is that a believable character arc? I, I, I fully understand your objection to it. And I think I would be willing to admit that it does come across as slightly inorganic that he does go from just being like... Because like I said, I mean, the whole thing is like based on that that diary, which, as we've already said doesn't really make much sense to him for him to be so upset about it considering how much fiona's making it clear that she's fine with him being an ogre but i guess i suppose in in at the end of the day you can always just rely on the fact well sometimes people are just mentally weird and you can't even tell but they've got these insecurities and she's like okay fine whatever so technically speaking it's not impossible that this is my this is my final statement. it's not impossible that he would have this mentality deep down but it's not that well communicated yeah i, I think it, it, you can get to this point you just need more than what we see yeah, uh, give give us another like scene of him like you know he's like oh he's he's worried about you know Fiona not you know being in love with him for much longer and then something else happens uh, I don't know what that could be um, maybe he, yeah. maybe he overhears a conversation that Fiona has with like her mother about you know him being an ogre and then yeah th- then yeah then it's like oh yeah so she this is she's talking to someone who she trusts about it and again like you know he interprets things poorly I, yeah I guess would that work? I, I'm. Yeah, I mean, also, I was just going to say that, like, in, in Shrek 1, you have that line about him being like, you know, people look at me and they say, ah, help, a big, ugly ogre. And he's like, he clearly is. Like, I mean, that's the whole the whole point of, like, Shrek 1, is that, like, he acts like he's all gruff and blah, blah, blah. But, like, you, you get the scene where he indicates that, actually, he is a bit insecure about the fact he's an ogre and how it makes people feel. So, like, maybe if, like, they could try and use that as groundwork and say, well, maybe, maybe... There's a sense which you lean into it being about his own insecurities about the fact he's an ogre. The problem is it's a bit difficult to marry that with, of course, the fact that he's quite obstinate and being like, well, I'm happy being an ogre and I like these people. But then, I don't know, he's been inconsistent on that before. So maybe that's something else you could kind of draw on. Yeah. Uh, and possibly you could have like an extra scene to 
to get into that. Yeah. I don't know. He says, well, you know, I used to be upset about this is this is the closest I can get to Scotland. I used to be upset about people thinking I was an ogre. Yeah. Well, yeah, but again, so he still has these, in- and it's fine if these insecurities flare up again, again. But you just need to give yeah. give me more than, yeah, just what we what we uh, what we see. So yeah, again, um, I think um, it's not believable really. But I was just gonna say, like, the one thing I was thinking is like, because my memory of it when I was rewatching it for this is I was like thinking that the fairy godmother tried to entice Shrek with like a potion or something. And then, like, obviously she wouldn't have wanted to give him the good potion. But, like, I was thinking, like, oh, the fairy godmother's the one who gives him the potion. So I was kind of surprised when I was like, oh, actually, he seeks out the potion. I'm just thinking, if the fairy godmother had given him the potion as part of some plan, like, maybe she, like, planned ahead with the whole um, Prince Charming thing or something like that, then, like, that could work better because it would be, yeah, like... I agree. You could be, like, he's being forced in, or kind of, not forced, but, you know, like, coaxed into yes, it. Yes, yes, again, he's he's been led astray, yes, rather than yes. his own. Rather than, like, going quite yes. out of his way to find, because, like, I need to get this potion. Yes, his insecurities are being played on by someone who's manipulating him, so that makes mm. more sense than just him on his own. He's been like, right, I have, yeah. I've got to do this, I've got to drink the potion. If the fairy godmother, you know, is insisting on it. So, yeah, I, I love that the uh, the fairy godmother's factory, by the way, is a, is a factory. Um, yes. Again, you know, parodying, well, possibly parodying, you know, the notion that there is some sort of, like magical nature to Hollywood, you know, something whimsical or, or special, you know, and uh, it's not, it's kind of brutal, you know, like a factory, I guess. Uh, or is it, is that actually the case? Is this movie parodying that notion or is it just a joke? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I think like, obviously, yeah, the idea of that disconnect between a place like this is where dreams are made. And then actually it's, it's very kind of industrial yes. and cynical i think uh, well, i think is... there has to be some intentionality there yeah well what well, you said on, on its face that is a good parody of hollywood right this is yes yeah, dream, exactly dreams are made oh look at how magic it's a cottage oh you know come to hollywood and then yeah. it's just yeah, a factory which is just again yes very very uh much not okay <laughs> well not a place where which which is magical and special it's yeah kind of uh but you know it's a it's a harsh reality uh being inside yeah. that place. i was i was like how they have a union yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> well, of course all that that's that's uh you know, that, that's not accurate. No, I'm joking. It is accurate, but the union's just not treated well. But then they won, didn't they? Yeah. Did, did the writer strike to that end well? Did they get their streaming residuals? Uh, I think so. Well done. I think, Good job. I think they got their residuals, the streaming. I'm not sure, though. So, uh, yeah, the fairy godmother says, you know, ogres are not meant to live happily ever after. You know, again, it's not like the Disney way, of course. And, yeah, not, this movie subverts that. But, hmm. again, they kind of did that storyline. Or the theme is similar to the first movie, you know, Um yeah. yeah, it's like oh yeah, ogres aren't meant for happiness. Yeah. Ogres aren't the for ogres happiness. in love with the princess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and that's the thing. You do this the whole thing with you know Shrek and Fiona once again. You know that you you do a story about their emotions, and therefore it's kind of hard not to have the same like theme and, and the same villain. You know, kind of in a mocking tone, saying oh yeah, ogres can't have happiness. You know that has to happen again. I guess hmm. you get what I mean. Yeah. No, yeah, I do. Yeah. And yeah, you gotta uh, what's the word? Reinforce things. Why not? Yeah, you got you gotta just yeah do it again circle back yeah but yeah i guess it, yeah with the plots being so similar you know you kind of have to do that even though yeah it's a, it's why i said you know the first one hits better because it's like a more original of course if you're doing the same storyline in the second one then you know maybe a critique would be yeah it's too similar to the first one but you know that, that's just how it is i guess with, with, with sequels sometimes so uh, shrek and donkey drink the potion and lament that nothing seems to be happening and of course the, the next morning uh shrek donkey and fiona awaken to find uh, that the two ogres are now humans and Donkey is a white stallion. Uh, shouldn't this could have been nitpicked? Shouldn't the dragon, because she's in love with Donkey as well, change into something else? You know, that's actually a good point. Yeah, yeah. but what, what would a dragon turn into? A swan. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like dragons are already pretty sexy. Yeah. So, well, okay. Like, that's the issue. Calm down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I love. Like, I'm gonna look up sexy dragons. Y- yeah. Sexy dragon. You do that. Oh, it, it auto it auto filled, <laughs> it auto completed. I, I um, love when Donkey, when he's a stallion, says, "Look at me, I am trotting like that." Again, that, that's yeah, yeah. great. Uh, yeah, and in order to make the changes permanent, Shrek must kiss Fiona by midnight. Shrek, so yeah, Shrek, Donkey, and Puss return to the castle, but Fiona misses him. Oh wow! Just uh, the, you know, she she runs yes. she runs out of the castle. Shrek runs in, and they miss each other. Ah, oh, ah, the fairy godmother's whole plan would have been foiled if they just met each other on the stairs yeah yeah <laughs> it's a game of inches yes uh, i love when she sees uh donkey and he goes yeah me, me and shrek are sexy and then yes fiona of course sees puss in boots and thinks maybe it's shrek you know <laughs> that, that, that that's funny that's that, that's clever and i yes. love the line delivery for your baby i could be 
you know <laughs> yeah yeah I, I yeah i like that one yeah. like i just all, all, it's good all that is really just tight comedy making use of the situation you know mm. maximizing the the comedic potential that exists with the scenario you have created so well that's good uh so yeah the fairy godmother by the way you've got some pictures of sexy dragons right you know uh, i got some pictures but like none of them are that sexy i mean like one wow. of them's that's a shock yeah i'm a bit disappointed i'll send you Don't. like Okay, oh sorry. I thought I thought that's what you were uh, no, you know, I, I thought you were angling for some sexy dragons. No, dragon I mean pictures. I could do that myself. I don't really need yeah. you to send me. Did you Did you know there's a whole subreddit for dragons fucking cars? No, I did not. Did, yeah, did, there's like a subreddit for like it's uh, dragons fucking cars reddit.com forward slash r forward slash dragons fucking cars. Did you expect me to know that? Uh yes, I thought that was your thing. Okay. When you talking about how you find dragons really sexy, maybe I'm, maybe I'm getting us confused. <laughs> no, yeah, I think you're getting me and you confused on that. So yeah, obviously Charming decides to pose as Shrek and uh yeah, to win Fiona's love. It would have been nice. I think it would have been nice if Charming, you know, tries to talk about like the swamp and, and donkey to try and sell that he he was uh, he was Shrek to Fiona. Um, yeah, I guess he doesn't really do a good job at like yeah. pretending to to be yeah, it's... Shrek. But I guess like the problem is like he's also supposed to be super dumb. I suppose you could say like he could do that in a dumb, unconvincing exactly. way. Exactly. But... Yeah, there's comedic potential yeah. here. He goes, "Oh yes, I used to love my uh, swamp and my uh, donkey, but now I'm I'm happy to be your prince charming." You know something like that yeah yeah i would just want to see him try and do a scottish accent yes okay and be bad so i can relate to him so at the fairy godmother's urging shrek leaves the castle believing that the best way to make fiona happy is to let her go yeah i i don't think again he would give up that easily like i said maybe if the fairy godmother had explained to shrek you know how much fiona wanted to be with prince charming really emphasize that more you know she's been dreaming about this guy all her life you know because shrek does say that later but like in the moment you wouldn't give up that easily would you like no. yeah he's just like well i guess fiona is seems kind of happy with this guy i can't really see because i'm like quite far away you know i've done all this for her i'm a new person so yeah i'm just gonna give up now despite all that yeah he's a real depressive yeah i, I just don't think that's realistic what would would you do that michael for, for your wife would you just give up when if you saw her with mm. the, uh, the the man of her dreams you know would, uh... would you not would you try to convince her to to stay with you yeah yeah i'd say i feel like i'm doing that all the time anyway okay. like every single any single time i see her i'm so insecure anytime i see her in the presence of any other man i just assume that that's what's going on yes yeah. and i'm just like and i just and i i i just walk off like she'll <laughs> she'll be happier this way <laughs> she's just wait where did michael go again <laughs> <laughs> just anytime yeah like the, the postman just says hi and i'm like oh god i guess she'll be happier with him yeah yeah and <laughs> you're just walking away it's like you know i, I love her so much I, I need to leave yeah. her you know it's my yeah. only option back to my back to my swamp back to my swamp i go right so yeah again it's just kind of ridiculous if you love someone that much then you wouldn't just give up that easily uh yeah uh, so fiona is skeptical of charming of course uh therefore to ensure the two will wed the fairy godmother gives harold a love potion to uh, to put in fiona's tea but the exchange is overheard by shrek donkey and puss what a coincidence michael that they meet at the same bar that shrek happens to be at you know of, of all the places of all the places yeah yeah they, of all the bars and all the something of blah 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 i had to go into this one that is kind of a plot hole wouldn't you say yeah yeah there are a few yeah yeah yeah, yeah that, that's a bit of a or a plot convenience i believe it's actually uh, i believe there's technically a distinction yeah good point a plot convenience a big plot convenience there i guess you know it is the bar that harold already went to but like you know the fairy godmother could have just met him at the castle you know plenty of rooms where they could have met why do they have to meet in this dingy bar you, you're not backing me up here you're just staying silent well I like no. I, I thought you were making the point sufficiently fine. Sorry, I, okay. I thought sometimes I, I I didn't realize I thought you were confident enough that you weren't even looking to me for approval. Okay, no, sometimes I'm not I'm insecure like Shrek, you know. So Shrek now wants to talk to Fiona because you know he now realizes that Charming is, um, you know, the fairy godmother's son. So I guess now he's like, oh yeah, they're tricking Fiona. So I need to step in. I guess that's his motivation, right? You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, then of course the fairy godmother threatens the king. Uh, you know, like and you know she is she is like this i guess a metaphor perhaps of like the domineering attitude of of hollywood or hollywood executives now like i can take your dreams away you must do what i say etc etc that was good right yeah oh th thank you i appreciate it <laughs> yeah but like yeah so would it make sense michael if she was jewish then uh no <laughs> no that's that's a racist joke no we don't like yeah. that um that's staying in <laughs> so strike donkey and puss who are arrested by uh, the royal knights after donkey 
inadvertently exposes them, uh, of course, get locked up. And yeah, I, I do like how they get captured. Uh, Donkey, of course, is yelling about police brutality and a gr- great mm. joke when Puss gets caught with catnip and says, uh, that's not, yes. that isn't mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I did actually, I, I believe I LOL'd actually at the whole, like the fact it was like knights, but it was cops. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I just thought it was funny. Like th- that was a good moment of uh, joke density. Yes. I think, I think that the joke density wraps up, uh, sorry, what's the word? Ramps up in this film. Yeah. Like as it goes on, you just get, like scenes where it's just like every line is a joke at some point. Yeah, points. they're more creative with it than the first movie, I think, perhaps as well. Mm. Again, like relying specifically on parodying like American culture, I think more so in this movie. Again, that 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 like sequence, that concept of yeah, <laughs> them uh, them being on TV uh, in in a cops parody, uh, yeah, and all the, all the jokes that come with it. That, that's great. So yeah, uh, w- while a royal ball begins, uh, the fairy tale creatures whom Shrek and Donkey had met during their first uh, adventure. Uh, arrive at the dungeon and rescue the trio they all storm at the castle with the help of a monstrous living gingerbread man created mm. by the muffin man um he's called mongo is that a reference to something uh i'm not sure because like, i was thinking like it sounds like a generic kind of you know big giant oh but isn't mongo like the name of the uh the guy in blazing saddles yeah. like the giant guy in blazing saddles yeah so i wonder if it was a reference to that but I don't know how the two are connected, really. Yeah. Well, that's for the kids, see? Like, okay. There's some jokes for the parents, but there's some Blazing Saddles references for the kids. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, the, the music goes particularly hard here, as the kids say. Yes. So, yeah, when uh, the fairy godmother was saying, I need a hero, and but that's overtaken by Shrek's theme. Uh, and then there's, yes. there's a good video on by, again, this guy Sideways, who talks about the digestive music in Shrek and how that's not really, again, sincere, but like the actual theme music is... I see. Yeah, yeah. That, that 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 is a good moment. Which again, it's it's musically literate. Is that the term? Probably not. Yeah. I, yeah. No. Yeah. I, I could see yeah. that being a term. Like. Yeah. yeah. Even if it's not a term, it can be one now. Yeah. I think like the the way that the final big action scene comes together is genuinely like unironically good. Like it's not just like oh what like it's it's not just funny. Again, it's kind of another like we kind of said about how they are able to handle a lot of the emotional stuff really well. It is quite a massive flex that even while they're sort of mocking other industries and stuff or mocking the industry yeah they're simultaneously able to do a lot of this stuff better than we've seen from you know other studios yeah yeah and again i you want to talk about the metaphor of dreamworks crashing the party again Mm. you know shrek coming in you know we we have this royal ball you know everything's going perfectly as it should you know the fiona is about a married prince charming etc etc but no, here comes Shrek and all these, you know, misfit mm. magical creatures, you know, mm. um, who are who are there to to uh, to fuck things up to, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, to uh, make make far far away great again. Yes. It's twenty sixteen. <laughs> Hillary Hillary is the uh, is is the fairy godmother. Yes, she, it's her turn. Yeah, Tim Kane is Prince Charming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait, what? Do you remember? Oh wait, am I? No, yeah, that is. Oh wait, is that Tim Kane? I thought it was. There's like a. There was like a politician who in the 2004 presidential. Yeah, that's race, Howard Dean. You fucking moron. Oh, Howard Dean. Okay, same person. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't name like presidential candidates. Well, I can. Twenty years I ago. I can. That's who you're dealing with. I can. Yeah. So. I'm sorry. Yeah. Don't yeah. Don't, don't try. I didn't. Don't yeah. try that shit around me. Right. So anyway, let's. Uh. Yeah. Let, well, you already said. Of course, the ending is a great concept, and I agree. Uh. Yeah. Mm. It really is. Of course. And. Uh, then we, of course, have um, the fairy godmother who gets killed after, you know, she tries to cast a spell at Shrek and then Harold, of course, uh, jumps in front of it, reverting into uh, the frog prince. Um, and yeah, I, I think, um, again, you know, he, well, it, it is a good, I guess, conclusion to his art because, you know, he's mm. been threatened all, all movie. And, and why is that? Well, because he was a, a creature which was unattractive. And he was turned into a human so he could marry a princess, etc. And that's what he did. Yes. Um, I guess the message is you can just be be yourself and you know like what what does fucking his wife say you know you're you're more you were more a man today than you ever have been uh, and yeah. I think that is actually a really good line honestly <laughs> like that's, yes. that, that, that yeah that's that's a, that's a great line and it's like yeah again well what it's you know what he did what he sacrificed that that shows how much you know of a of a good person he is um and yeah he he has a good character arc as well in this movie uh, so yeah, even when kind of the he's almost a villain, of course, when he has a character arc, yeah, yeah, and and comes to the good side, uh, and it, and is convinced, I guess, by the you know Shrek and Fiona after he hated their relationship at first, he sees how much they're in love, and he's like, oh no, wait, yeah, this is I I, I got to save them, you know. That it, again, that's a great moment, and it's it's exactly right that he was the one that you know stopped the fairy godmother. 
Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. And I also think like the like him being the frog prince, it's it's a good example of the way this movie can like um in fact like there's actually this this term which I like to use. Uh have you ever heard the phrase or the word syncretism? No, go on. It's basically just like when you take all sorts of um disparate ideas in a culture, like a kind of let's say a cultural canon, and you bring it all together into one coherent work it's often used to describe like a lot of modern cults where like cults will like take like um christian theology but then they'll throw in like some pagan babylonian stuff and then they'll like throw in like fucking slender man or something where it's like this weird thing of a your favorite tv show supernatural does it a lot of just taking like all sorts of different things and like trying to merge it into this and usually it ends up absolutely stupid and ridiculous but with this movie obviously what they've done is they've taken the entire canon of fairy tales which are in reality quite disparate and you couldn't really have a coherent like cinematic universe and it is quite impressive the way they have for the most part managed to bring things together i think like yeah. having like the frog prince that's a good example of that where it's like you've got this frog prince idea okay how do we incorporate this into the story mm-hmm. in a way it works okay well he's like this guy who he was a frog prince and now he's like indebted like you know so it's just a clever example of you know how they do it yeah no i, I agree and again it just shows how creative this movie is and yeah it's it's I, I think it, yeah, it's a really good ending again uh, with uh, Fiona uh, not wanting to turn uh, into a human permanently um, and wanting to go back to being an ogre, which again kind of backs up what I've been saying throughout the movie that Shrek was really insecure about nothing. Like, you know, uh, hmm. yeah, we can stay like this forever. And she's just like, no. So yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, he really didn't need to go down this path. And again, if he was pushed perhaps by the fairy godmother, that would have made more sense. Uh, but yeah, uh, and then of course uh, we have uh, Living to be Thy Loka. Or however you fucking yes. say it. How do you say it? Living, uh, living la vida loca. Living la vida loca. Inside. Yeah. Was it who, who sang that? Ricky Martin. Uh, yeah, and he's gay, right? Yeah. Uh, I think so. Yeah. I I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh. Well, it's not as good as uh Smash Mouth, is it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think, yeah yeah i didn't really like like you know i mean i'm always down to end uh anything with a dance party yes. that's my favorite thing about daddy's home but um well, like i don't like this as much well, living the, v, like, like, the lyrics don't actually correspond to what happened in the movie but yeah because so, yeah, they're not really living la vida loca but of course they're living la vida ogre oh wow that would have been perfect but they don't <laughs> say that though do they no they don't oh, fuck they missed a great opportunity there uh wow. yeah of, of course how does that smash mouth song go again is, uh, it's uh, then I saw her face. No. Oh, sorry. No, wait. That's that's. Uh, there, well, there's there's somebody. Yeah. No, that's. That is, I was just trying to remember what they're yeah, doing. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. I was, but it's. Yeah, now I'm a believer, not a trace of doubt in my mind. You know, yeah. it's about two people finding but love. Before that, it's like I thought. L- oh, I thought love was only true in fairy no. tales, meant for someone else, but not for exactly, me. Exactly. Exactly. And you see how those yes. lyrics perfectly. Co- was that song written for the movie? Maybe because. No. No. Oh wow. No, you know what? Like, not only was that song not written for the movie, it's not an original song by Smash Mouth. It's an original song by the Monkeys in the 1960s. Oh wow, that's incredible. <laughs> I'm a believer. There you go. Monkeys. So that, so that was just perfect, and this again living yeah living la vida loca is that it yes living la vida, living loca. La vida loca which of course in spanish means uh living la vida loca <laughs> <laughs> you got me it's living the crazy life yeah and maybe you can say that there's a kind of a connection there but not really you know so again the, yeah. the, the, the lyrics in the first movie at the end oh sorry the, the song at the end of the first movie makes so much more sense no yeah yeah i, I would agree yeah. i don't think one could really argue that they're living they're not even living the uh, dolce vide are yeah. they uh, so let's conclude you go first um i said at the beginning this movie was better and i know like than the original and i know why i i said that and do believe it in in some sense which is that i think this movie you've got to give it credit for the way that it so successfully expands things um and i think it builds on the original but i think it's a situation where this is everything a sequel pretty much should be uh but then you could say the original was everything that an original pretty much should be uh so you know maybe you could just say they're both really good at what they're supposed to be and it's not so easy to say which one's better having said that i do agree that are you gonna give it in trying to be more expansive it does kind of mess things up uh i think i'm gonna give it a i'm gonna give it a middling eight yeah i think that's fair i mean i gave the first movie an 8.5 i'm gonna give this one an eight out of ten uh so yeah slightly worse uh because yeah i do think yeah the jokes are funny it's got a good message as well but again it's not quite as original and i think yeah uh it, yeah the, the, again the character arcs of, of shrek his development etc his motivation just doesn't really make that much sense 
could have done a better job there. Uh, anyway, uh, but yeah, still a, a really good movie, of course. An eight out of ten is a very good score. Uh, what? It, well, actually, before we go on to uh, what we're doing next time, uh, Wolverine. we have receipts, of course, for Deadpool and Wolverine, yes. which uh, got eighty-one percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, you guessed sixty-eight, and I guessed seventy-five. So you were thirteen off, and I was six off. Uh, which means, of course, uh, that's a, a difference of seven. So the gap closes by seven. So you uh, you were winning by 16, Michael. And our difference is now you're only winning by nine. Uh, so yeah, the difference between you and me is, is ju- it's just nine now, pal. It's just nine. So Okay, well, that's good. I like it. Exciting. So yeah. It's when I, that's when I feel like I'm at my best. I like that that rush, okay. that thrill. What, what are we reviewing next week? Uh, next week, I feel like I've, I've already kind of uh, mentioned this movie as an example of a good sequel. So there we go. That's some positive uh, foreshadowing. Spider-Man 2 is what we're reviewing because it is indeed, you won't believe this, the 20-year anniversary for a change. Yeah, so join us uh, for that so next yeah. time. Uh, who have you been, Michael? Uh, I've been, I've been Luke. And yeah, thanks for listening to our Select and Reflect on Shrek 2. Uh, goodbye and get out of my swamp. Goodbye and get out of Luke's swamp. <laughs>